Kaya. Chapsu unmilitam ye nantas my Sri Gadavena Maha. Sri Chaitanya Manobi stam stapitam ye nabutale. Swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swam padanti kam. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise Sasuni Pasyat Yere Satarine Pancha Kalpa, Tuvis Cha, Kripa Sindhu, Beheva Cha, Patitana, Mukhavani Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo, Namahama Maha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I will return in, in just one short moment. Okay, I'm back, Hare Krishna. So in pursuing which is coming up in two days. Maharaj, your voice is breaking on Wednesday. What's breaking? Your voice is uh, cutting out, Maharaj. In pursuance of the 
upcoming festival <clears> on <throat> Ram Nomi, we'll be uh, pursuing some of the pastimes of the Lord. So today we'll do an interesting pastime, which is somewhat seen in a controversial way by many acharyas, persons who try to understand things from a critical point of view. And uh, it's, um, it's where the Lord gets put into a situation of a misunderstanding. And that is uh, the situation with the contention between two very close brothers, which changed by one unfortunate circumstance, and that is Bali and Sugriva. We might call this uh, uh, judging without understanding. Mm -hmm. And it has a lesson, and we'll weave the lesson into the pastime as we try to explain. Um, there were two very powerful brothers who lived in the Kishkinda forest. They were the king of the uh, Varnaras. There was Bali, and there was Sugriva. Bali was the king, Sugriva was his assistant. Both were sapiens and simians combined. That is the nature of the Varna race. Bali, they both had the same father, Riksharaj, mm -hmm. and he was the king of the Varnas. And when Riksharaj passed away due to old age, the next in line was Bali to take the throne. Both brothers were connected to the devas. Sugriva was uh, connected with um, Surya, and Bali was connected with Indra. Both of them were very close to each other and they had a very loving relationship as brothers. One situation came, now as we understand the geography of that area in the time that in the northern area, they was ruled by the Davis. In the southern area, the demons were in control. So the land was divided into two areas, the north and the south, the Davis in uh, power in the north and the demons in power in the south. So occasionally there would be uh, wars between the demons and the devas. So one such demon, he was a very powerful demon. His name was Mayavi. He decided to attack Bali. So he came to Bali was sitting on the throne and this demon came and was about to attack him. Bali immediately got up from his throne to come. But Sugriva was also there and Sugriva wanted to assist his brother. So they both came at the demon. The demon realized that uh, this is no match for me. So he decided to flee the two brothers in pursuance. They chased him. Uh, Bali was thinking, if I let him go, and he might cause havoc in other areas. So better to rid ourselves of this demon. But the demon was fast and he managed to escape and he went into this area where there was a dark cave, more than like a catacomb area. And he disappeared into the cave. Hmm. Both brothers stopped at the entrance. Bali said, I'm going in to finish him off. 
you stand guard just in case there are more demons coming. So Bali goes in. Now it's quiet for a long time, in fact, for two or three days. And finally, there is a very loud scream. Now, Bali could hear the scream. I mean, I'm sorry, Sugriva could hear the scream and he was thinking, who, what is this scream? But then he recognized it was his brother's voice. So he's thinking, is my brother in trouble? So he didn't know what to do. And so then after some time, blood flowed out of the cave. So he was thinking, oh, the demon has killed my brother. So he wasn't sure. He was thinking, what is the situation? Um, so he decided, well, if the demon is still in the cave, then I should block his retreat. So he was thinking what to do. So there was this huge boulder that was nearby. So with his powerful strength, he moved the boulder to conceal the opening of the cave. Feeling that he had lost his dear brother, he was in a state of mourning. He returned to the kingdom and explained to the citizens there what had happened. And then they performed some ceremony. And then they said, well, ba Sugriva, you are the next in line. So you must rule the kingdom. Sugriva was reluctant, but upon the persistence of the citizens, the monkey followers, he accepted the throne. After some time, Bali, he was still alive in the cave. It was actually the demon that was killed. And the scream was Bali's scream, but it was a scream of victory and not of, of death. So now he was coming out, but then when he tried to come out, there was this big boulder in front of the cave. After fighting the demon for three days, he was already exhausted. And now this huge boulder was blocking the cave. So he rested a while after regaining his strength. He finally was able to move the boulder aside. And, and he was thinking, how did this boulder get there? It fitted so nicely. It couldn't have happened by accident. It must have been put there by Sugriva. Bali was a little bit tormented by what happened. And now he was returning to the kingdom. When he came to the kingdom, he came into the, the courtyard and there he saw Sugriva was sitting on the throne. Immediately, without giving his brother even a chance to explain what had happened, he immediately started to attack his brother and start beating him with his fists. Sugriva was more hurt by the fact that Bali misjudged him than he was by being beaten by Bali. And, but Bali wouldn't let up and Bali was strong. So finally Sugriva decided to flee knowing he couldn't fight back against his brother. And then there was a chase. Now Sugriva knew that there was one ashram called Matanga uh, Muni's ashram. Matanga Muni had uh, had a situation many years ago where Bali had killed this demon called Dudanbi, Dudubi, Dundubi, Dundubi. And uh, he threw the demon's carcass uh, miles away by his power and it landed in the ashram of Matanga Muni while he was performing a sacrifice and it desecrated the whole sacrifice. Muni, by his intelligence and by his spiritual power, he could understand this was the work of Bali. And so he became very angry and cursed Bali that if Bali comes within four miles of this area, he will automatically die. So now Subriva was taking shelter in Matanga Ashram. And he was also kind of concerned that Bali would 
send some other people to try to kill him also. Finally, we fast forward it a little bit to where after searching for Sita and when uh, Ravana had stole Sita, uh, Sita Lakshman and Ram had come across uh, Hanuman. Hanuman. And Hanuman brought uh, and Ram explained to Hanuman what his concern in trying to find his dear wife, Sita Devi. So Hanuman said, well, I will take you to our commander, Sugriva, and he can help you. So um, he came and that, that was the time when uh, Bali had taken back the throne Gurmaraj got disconnected or Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, you are on mute, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, we lost the uh, yes, connection for a while. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning, sir. Mm -hmm. So uh, this mistake by Bali is called an attribution error. There's, we sometimes judge a person simply by what we see before us and we attribute that to his character. Some, but sometimes that judgment is wrong. It's not necessarily the character that's coming out, it's the situation that is provoking the, the activity of the person we're judging. So in this case, this is, was the case, rather than looking in, knowing that Sugriva was actually a, a dear brother of Vali, they, he had always been loyal to his brother. Vali seemed to neglect that and he simply made his own uh, conclusion based on what he saw, which was completely wrong. So, and not even hearing from La, uh, Sugriva he immediately judged him. For, for, an, for an example, just like we might see someone uh, eating too much and we think, oh, that person is just a glutton. <laughs> but then again, when we overeat, we think, boy, I was really hungry this time. I hadn't eaten for a while. 
So we somehow use different judgments to uh, based on ourselves and others, not knowing the actual external situations which can provoke somebody to act differently than their nature due to the circumstances. <laughs> So without this determining what makes a person behave that way, we rather presume something that's based on uh, what we see, and that's that type of judgment can cause problems. <laughs> so now Ram is on the scene and he meets Sugriva. Sugriva's, Sugriva's wife, Rumi, uh, was, you know, was taken by Bali. And then uh, Ram had a connection with Sugriva because both had, someone had stolen their own wife. So there was a connection and Sugriva said, well, actually, I'll help you get back your wife if you can help me get back my wife. <laughs> And so um, Ram saw the connection. And he also saw that this powerful monkey army would be perfect to assist him in trying to um, attack the kingdom of, uh, of Ravana. Now, what happened was Bali was always waiting for Sugriva to leave Atanga's ashram, and that way he could attack him again. This time, Ram said to Bali, um, Sugriva, I'm sorry. Krishna. I think Guru Maharaj got disconnected again. Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Yeah, I've somehow, I don't know, I keep losing the internet. It keeps cutting out on me here, so. Yeah, uh, if you can uh, stop your video, maybe it, may, it might get better. I yeah. Maybe get a little more power, okay. All right, so. Uh, So then why did Ram act the way he did? Sometimes people could consider him, why did he hide behind a tree and, and uh, want to assist Sugriva in that way? 
But before we get into that part, I'm going to describe a little bit more about what is happening. And here, um, Sugriva wants to know from Brahm whether he can actually, you know, uh, kill Bali. And so Ram takes an arrow and shoots it through seven shal trees. It goes through the seven shal trees, goes into the hellish planets, kills a bunch of demons who were performing austerities, comes back out and into his quiver. When Sugriva saw that, he could understand the power of, Lord, of the Lord. So now there's a fight. So Sugriva comes and challenges Bali. Bali's amazed that his brother's challenging him. So now they came out and the fight is going on. Now, as the fight is going on, Ram is there waiting to shoot his arrow, but then he's looking and he can't tell the difference between the two brothers. They look exactly the same. And so after some time, there's a, we see that Bali is getting the upper hand and Sugriva is being beaten real bad. Finally, he flees away and runs back to Ram and says, why? What happened? You promised. He said, well, actually, I couldn't tell both of you apart, so I didn't want to shoot you by mistake. So um, challenge him again, but this time wear a red bandana over your head and I'll be able to see the difference. So, uh, okay. So Sugriva, after some time, he goes out and challenges Vali again. Vali is this time with his wife, Tara. And Bali, when he gets challenged, he's ready to run out. But Tara says, my dear husband, this is not right. Something is wrong. He's coming back so soon. There must be something else. I don't think you should go. He listens to his wife, Tara, but doesn't take her advice and immediately leaves. And the fight begins again. And this time, again, uh, Bali is getting the upper hand and finally the Lord shoots an arrow and hits Bali and knocks him back. <laughs> so then again, the question is, why did, why did the Lord not face Bali in the fair fight? And here the simple logic is that when you're dealing with a criminal, there's no question of a fair fight. Coming face to face with a criminal is not considered to be uh, necessary. Just like when a person commits a crime and maybe it's a violent crime and they're running, the police don't try to have a fair fight with the criminal. They just try to, to you know, dispatch the criminal. So in the same way, the Lord acted in that way. He shot the arrow and he knocked Bali back. Bali was still living. The Lord came in front of Bali. And then there's a wonderful exchange. Finally, Bali could understand that this was the Supreme Personality of God him. And the Lord said to him, you know, I because you had taken Uh, another person's wife therefore you deserve to die but uh, the Lord but the, the Lord said to Bali actually if you want I can restore your life Bali said no uh, he said because I'm seeing you face to face this is a, my benediction if I leave my body, seeing you face to face, then I know my destination is good, is successful. Bali had a particular necklace that was given to him by his father, Indra. And as long as he wore this necklace, he could not be killed. But the necklace didn't work in front of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But because he had the necklace on, and though he was wounded by the arrow of the Ram, he was still able to speak. 
And finally, he understood all his mistakes. He took the necklace off. He could have gave it to his son, Angada, but he said to Sugriva, Sugriva, rule the kingdom, take care of, take care of my wife also, Tara, and your wife, Huma, make sure they're happy and make sure my son Angada is happy. And as soon as he took off the necklace, his life left. And then there's a lot of criticism around why did the Lord act like that? We mentioned one thing when you were dealing with an aggressor, there's no question of a fair fight. It's always fair. The other thing is that why didn't Ram come to Bali and ask for Bali's help in order for him to uh, assist him because Vali had already fought with Ravana once before and he had beaten Ravana in a fight and Ravana had to leave. So Bali was even more powerful than Ravana. So Bali could have went to Ravana and, you know, defeated Ravana. But then that would have made the whole thing look bad that the Lord went to someone who stole another person's wife to ask him to assist him in getting his wife back. And then people would have criticized Lord Ramachandra. He said he took help from this person and that would have diminished the whole glory of Lord Ramachandra. So that was the reason like that. The Lord said before Bali, I can make you live, but Bali desired to die because seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face is the perfection of life. And therefore Bali left. Bali was a greater devotee than Sugriva, but he had made the error, attribution error. He mistakenly came to a conclusion without hearing. So sometimes we find ourselves judging another person without knowing the situation. Well, therefore, one should be careful that this can cause destruction of relationships and it also can cause us to commit offenses. So um, when something, when some situation comes up and we're not sure, better to under, try to understand the situation through the discussion and before one makes a decision or makes a conclusion based on that decision. So Ram was not, uh, what we say, guilty of uh, breaking religious principles, although he killed Vali hiding behind a tree and he shot an arrow. And this is, was explained why he did it. Uh, okay, so this is a, this particular story from the Ramayan, which is interesting. So before one makes a, a decision, one should consider three things. To acknowledge in those relationships that have gone sour, we can introspect and tongue check and see if we are in error before we actually make a judgment. We need to acknowledge this. Apologize, just as arrogant words of judgment can hurt, humble words of reproachment can heal. Take steps in building relationships. Apologizing like Bali for the wrongs done. Amend. Actions speak louder, just as Bali gave his necklace to Sugriva. What can we do? Whatever we can do is pass one to circumstance or at least mitigate the consequences of our misjudgment. Bali required the jolting arrival of death to put aside his pride and make, and make up for his misjudgment. We can learn from this story before we make such mistakes. Well, here's a few points on this particular pastime which the Lord is criticized for, but the sages actually understand that actually, that the Supreme Personality of Godhead acted in such a way that he did not break religious principles. 
it says in the Shastras, if someone, if someone takes your wife, then that person is considered an aggressor. And if you kill that aggressor, there is no sin involved. Yeah. And Bali didn't take time to hear. His brother was always loyal to him and was always his support. Now Bali made the mistake, a big mistake of the judgment, even before giving a chance for Sugriva to speak. Sugriva wanted to speak when Bali first approached him, but Bali was so angry that he, because he misjudged the whole circumstances, he started to, to beat Sugriva even before he gave him a chance to speak. So we see sometimes that due to pride, and Bali was powerful. He was extremely powerful. Some people say that uh, actually, um, that uh, that the I believe it was Sugriva who then again appeared in Krishna's pastimes as Arjun. That is some of the, some acharyas say that others have different opinions about that. Okay, so this is a little bit of a point of consideration. Any comments or questions related to this particular pastime? Judging without understanding? Sri Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, thank you so much for the class, Guru Maharaj. Uh, very nice points you mentioned, um, especially about uh, this topic, judging others, <coughs> which is a bad thing to um, which is a bad thing to have, and uh, we should always uh, be careful about that. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, I request devotees if they have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, they can ask Guru Maharaj, or they can type in the chat box. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Matsya Daspi, can you hear me well? Yeah, Matsya, how do you well? Yeah. Hare Krishna. So, uh, when you started narrating this um, very interesting pastime, how Lord Ramachandra killed um, Bali um, in a way that has raised a lot of um, a lot of uh, how to put it um, a lot of emotions yeah a lot of critic even criticism yes exactly uh, and then uh, although I mean I have no problem with that to be honest um, it is a, a specific pastime uh, from which we I'm not sure if we can learn anything basically because in my view and understanding it a specific pastime between the Lord and his devotee, whatever kind of devotee Bali was, but he obviously was a devotee of Lord uh, uh, But this uh, explanation alone that uh, um, because he was uh, an aggressor, then the aggressor can be killed in just any way uh, one pleases. Um, I'd like to tell you what happened or draw your attention to the pastime that occurred later on with Madasita when Hanuman found her. And then uh, if, you, if you recall, Hanumanji was very angry about uh, the ladies, the, the, the female uh, Rakshasas that were around Madasita and who were harassing her. And he wanted to punish them. But Mother Sita said, 
said, no, don't do that because that's not right. She said, and I'm not quoting, I'm just uh, uh, retelling what, what, how I understood that things happened. She said, although they were wrong, it doesn't give, grant us permission to be wrong as well. So if they acted against Dharma, then it's not a permission for you, Hanuman, to act against Dharma on my behalf. Yeah. So uh, there is there's an interesting parallel, uh, the way I see it, which casts a little shadow or a little doubt, not a shadow, but a doubt on what Acharyas have uh, said about the reason, uh, the, the permission uh, the Lord had to kill Bali. And I, I, I'm hoping, I hope I have expressed myself adequately without any intention to criticize uh, either Yogu, what you have said, or Acharya's the explanation they have given, just to, just to give another perspective on how one should behave towards uh, the aggressor, although the aggressor um, has been uh, convinced by uh, the scriptures. Would you like to comment? Yeah, on? well, of course, yeah, he is an aggressor. He is an aggressor, according to Maha, according to Mana Samhita, aggressor should be killed immediately by a Kshatriya. Um, and then, of course, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the first chapter, in one purport, Prabhupada mentions the six aggressors that um, uh, can be killed immediately, and there's no sin incurred, according to. same thing that happened to Ram. <laughs> so um, that particular type of sin seems to be one that is punishable immediately as opposed to a situation where someone is acting and is doing something wrong against Dharma. We have to understand what is the motivation behind it or what is the activities in, the, in this this case these were rakshashis and they were acting under the uh, rule of Ravana um, mother Sita had that she was compassionate more she was feeling that compassion and it also says of course uh, in the case that a woman should never be killed if she, if she even if she is an aggressor or acting wrongly. That's another principle of the Mano Samhita. So you might even consider that in the case of these Rakshashis. Yes, you're right. Uh, but still, Hanuman... Think, yeah, I don't think the parallel is, is, is the same. I think the principles are, are the parallel between the activities that are happening are, are a little bit different. The question is if, if Hanuman went, and went ahead and killed these ladies or did something to them, um, was he, would he be transgressing religious principles? Um, we might say yes, maybe, because there was no reason to do. But in this case, there was a reason to. That's my understanding. Yes, thank you. Thank you. No, I don't, I, honestly, I have no intention to argue at all. Uh, whatever. No, you can, um, you can play in, and that's fine. You can, you can present your, your ideas. It's not about argument, it's just trying to, I don't see the same parallel between the two situations. I see there's a, there, the elements that make up the situation are, are a lot different. It's just what uh, what I thought of when I when I heard uh, you speaking about this first time. What I thought of were, were these words by Mother Sita: "If they have done us something wrong, it doesn't grant us to do uh, wrong as well." But then, okay, on contrary, uh, it's as you have said, it's it's actually not the same situation because 
Uh, Bali yeah. is uh, definitely in a different situation, in a different. I think it's, a, yeah, I think the, the, the ingredients are, are quite different. <laughs> There is something else I wanted to mention, if you if you wouldn't mind. Uh, there, there is a. Um, I really enjoyed your uh, your the series of talk on Lloyd Ramachandra, uh, being one of my favorite topics, uh, actually. There is uh, one very little known feature of uh, Ramayana, which came from, as they say, Valmiki Muni himself. In a, in a different body, in a different, uh, in a different time, about 500 years ago. And it's a very, very nice tool, very devotional tool of um, <clears throat> gaining better understanding um, of what is, what is going on in our lives, of connecting with Lord Ramachandra, with Ramayan. Uh, would you like me to to say something about that. To you said what? 500 years ago? Yes, yes. Um, well, according to um, some devotees, uh, and I'm not able to give exact reference at the moment. I'm standing in the middle of, uh, of the uh, Zagreb city center waiting for my wife to come out from work. And I was just listening to your presentation, enjoying as it did over the last couple of days uh, on the topic of Ramayan. So I just felt inspired to, to share this uh, if, if devotees are interested. Um, but, according yeah. to some sources, Valmiki Muni um, influenced or um, made by uh, Hanuman and a certain, what they say, a quarrel that they had, Hanuman told him that he will have to return in the age of Kali and once again present the glories of Lord Ram in the, in, in the everyday common language of, of people, not in, in Sanskrit or what, I believe that was the original uh, language of Ramayana, but in a common language. So his name was Tulsidas. Tulsidas Rishi, he was known as a, as a, a great poet and uh, all of his poetry was about uh, Ramayan and Lord Ramchandra. Are you familiar with Tulsidas? Um, only that I heard yes. of him. I, I, haven't a, I haven't read any of the Ramayan written by Tulsidas. No? Yes, not exactly Ramayan. It was a lot of poems. Um, I guess some stories as well. But what I wanted to mention is uh, this one specific tool which Tulsidas created um, that enables us very nicely to connect with Ramayan, uh, to uh, bring Lord Ram and his entourage into our everyday life. Once Tulsidas was asked to um, to give guidance, to provide guidance for uh, one occasion. And in Sanskrit, that's called prashna, and it's known in astrology, the question to, to the expert seer. It's like, what shall I do? How shall I, what should be my decision? How shall I proceed in a certain situation? And Tulsidas told that person to come back in, uh, in a week. And in those seven days or whatever it was, um, he wrote what became known as Rama Agya Prashna. And it's actually the card's divination deck, but it's based on Ramayan and it gives answer from Ramayan. So one asks a question and then one receives a specific personality from Ramayan and also specific pastime from which one can understand the answer to the question. Now, this choice of words, Rama Agya Prashna, Agya has, a, has two meanings. One is uh, to serve. So it means that by doing that, one serves Lord Ram by inquiring, 
um, from him by by inquiring from Ramayan, by serving Ramayan, by by contemplating on Ramayan. And it also means, Agya also means the command. So if I have a doubt or an issue in life and I seek guidance from, from Ram, then basically what I'm, what I've been, uh, what I'm, what I'm getting in return is the command of Lord Ram about my life, about the answer itself is command of, of Ram Chan. So I find that very nice. Uh, not many devotees know about this. It can be purchased on Amazon. If you just um, type uh, the Oracle of Rama, it's highly devotional, completely 100%. Everything's about Lord Ram. Everything's about the pastimes from, uh, from Ramayan. And, and uh, it's done in such a nice and expert way that it could, it could only be done by Valmiki, really. That you receive an answer, the exact answer, on a, on a, on a, on a question you, you have. And it's, it's uh, the, the uh, parable, the parallel from uh, Ramayana. It's called the Oracle of? Oracle of, of Ram. Of Ram. The Oracle just of Ram, yes. R yes. Just R-A-M? Yeah, uh, uh, Rama. But anyway, you, you write, write it on the internet, it will, it will come. Mm, interesting. I never heard of it, <laughs> but yes. it sounds. I'll, I'll show you. I have two sets. Uh, I one devotee uh, borrowed his, and then I ordered mine. So now I have two. But I'll have. I'll keep mine, and I'll show you next time with me. It's it's uh, very very nice, and it it's uh, a perfect tool to connect. You know how sometimes we 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 have a doubt. We we need an answer and then we opening like Bhagavad Gita. That's, that's what I used to do. But the problem with that, and then you open Bhagavad Gita randomly and you read and you receive an inspiration. But the problem with that is that, uh, for me as well, uh, at least, that I always knew where am I opening. And it was a little biased. So I knew, okay, this is going to be the 12th chapter, or this is going to be around eighth chapter. And then I knew what to expect. Anyway, the principle stands, but this, by drawing a card, uh, it's, it's a completely different, um, completely different thing. And it works perfectly, really. It's like it tarot cards? It's like tarot cards? Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. But you have a, uh, it's like, um, I'm sorry, I haven't got it here. I'm not at home. Otherwise, I would, I would send you a photo of one such card. And you would see that every, each card, uh, there, is, there is a group of seven, uh, uh, seven group of cards. And each group refers to a certain portion of Ramayana. And each group there's seven kind, yeah, there's, se there's seven kandas in the Ramayana. Yes. And then... And then uh, each has a, like a title, and then ex immediately understand what is the answer about. And then each card has a seven lines, and those seven lines correspond with seven personalities from Ramayana. Uh, there is uh, uh, Lord Ram, of course, the holy name, Sita, Bharat, Lakshman, Shatrugna, and Hanuman. And each of them bring a certain flavor, or carry a certain flavor. And then each of those seven lines on, on, on each of the cards will bring a certain um, variety into the, uh, those groups, those seven groups. It's it's done really amazing in an amazing way. And I mean, only for Mickey Moon could have done it. How long you've been working with this? I not too long actually. It hasn't. It has been brought to my attention not so long ago. Hmm. All right, I'd be interested if you when you get back to your place, you can uh, maybe send me something. Here, here's something yeah, here. A... Yeah, Oracle Ram. Da Put that, put that up again, whoever just put it up. They took it down again, so. 
Yeah, it says here, Oracle, Dr. David, oh, Dr. David Frawley. Oh, now I understand. Yes, yes. yes. I know him, yeah. yeah. Yes. Have you met him in person? No, he's written books on Ayurveda. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. one of the uh, Western pundits, uh, genuine one. But it, it turns out that the way he's done it, I mean, he's a devotee of Ram, no doubt about it. The way he he, he wrote, rewrote the uh, the original uh, Rama Agya Prasna by Tulsidas. So he re rewrote, but in really nice way. I mean, he could be hidden this or that or whatever, but if we take only this oracle and the explanations and uh, how he his endeavor to um, to bring Lord Ram and Ramayan closer to common people is just um, very very nicely done. The uh, very nice preaching effort. Well, okay. So everyone has the. Uh... The link here, if you're interested, you can connect with this Amazon link and see what Matsi is saying. Maybe there is something uh, we can learn from this. But I know one thing, the Ramayan is just filled with, with messages. Every line is, there's a message there. Okay, thank you, Matsya. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, devotees, uh, if you have any more questions or comments. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, um, just a comment. I think the points of these pastimes are very, very important in the sense that I often have time to uh, make judgments about the situation before full inquiry. And uh, our senses are not perfect. So sometimes we see and hear things, but we don't understand the context and we take it the wrong way. So thank you uh, for reiterating that because it is a constant reminder that is uh, so likelihood that we will create offenses, but more uh, if you don't understand the whole context, but it's also don't provide another person an opportunity uh, to speak his or her side of the story. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. Two things are there. Is it... Is it actually them or is it the incident that has sparked the activity? So one is, the incident may be something out of the ordinary that happens. And that's, but some, we, we usually look at it as that's the person, the per, it happens that way because of that person. And we don't really uh, analyze thoroughly the actual situation that brought about. And that is where the dialogue is required to clear up, clear the air. And that's where Bali made a mistake. There was no reason why he should have judged his brother without giving him a chance because his brother has always been loyal to him. So his impetuousness, but it was his pride that did it because he was proud, he was sure he was right. And pride can cause one to commit offenses and make mistakes. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Pride thinks, well, I actually know this situation, so therefore I'm responding based on, because I understand it clearly. Okay. Thank you. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you for narrating this beautiful pastime with so many lessons for us about 
hastily reacting to a situation, I was thinking that sometimes we may act like that uh, in the spur of the moment or we are overcome by emotions and we may react angrily or wrongly. But while he had a choice, after he chased his brother off, he had time to cool down and think about the situation and see whether his brother had acted like that before and then say, but he's never done anything to hurt me or harm me before. So maybe I should call him back and say, what was he trying to say? I was so angry in that moment that I didn't even give him a chance. So maybe he had a choice to call him and say, okay, I've cooled down now. I want to hear what you have to say. And But he did not do that. He chased him away and then just continued uh, condemning his brother without ever taking time to review his own actions or doing any introspection. So I was just wondering that sometimes as devotees, we may make a mistake, but if we calm down or cool down or think about it or consult others, maybe in that spur of the moment we acted hastily or impulsively, we may have a chance to redeem <laughs> something rather than be just condemned to uh, just continue on that wrong course of action, isn't it? Yeah, it was his pride that didn't allow him to reflect on this situation. He was sure he was right. Mm -hmm. And pride will cause one to think in a certain way and then feel that because you know, that pride allow, doesn't allow one to think that I'm, I'm mistaken. Mm -hmm. mm. We, we, some, you know, we, we, do, we find ourselves in these situations sometimes a lot. Something, somebody says something or somebody does something. Immediately, we got, a re, we got a response to it. And if we can't meet the person, we start mulling it over in their head and making all kinds of conclusions. But then later on, we find everything is wrong. <laughs> or when we calm down and start chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and start reflecting on the whole situation, we find out it's not like the way we initially felt about it. Mm -hmm. So that pride doesn't allow us to take in some of the other possibilities that may have, that is there due to that situation. So again, that it's pride again. And, you know, Bali was very proud and he was also extremely powerful too. So people who cannot admit that they have made a mistake or who cannot uh, maybe even after introspection they have a niggling doubt that maybe they're wrong but their pride prevents them from admitting it or, or making amends. Would you say mm. that they cannot then go forward in relationships because they don't have this ability to express regret and make amends? Well, it cuts off their understanding of others. They see themselves superior mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And therefore, um, they may also take instructions from others who are superior, but in general, if they feel superior to others, then those persons cannot instruct them in whatever way. We get into that too in our society. Sometimes we get good information from people who are in a lesser position than we are in devotional service, but because of our position and the pride that comes with it, we can't hear it. Even if we hear it, we can't really assimilate it. Um, it doesn't mean we're wrong, but pride has a tendency to cause us to make mistakes. Mm. So this could be such a huge stumbling block in our relationships, in our devotional life, in everything, that we have to really guard against this tendency and try to be humble and, and seek the 
uh, wise counsel of others because we may not be able to see the whole picture. We may not even be able to see where we are wrong. Yeah. We do have, do have the example of Nalagubera Mani Griva. When Narada Muni came and they were in that embarrassing situation, they didn't even consider themselves to be wrong. And they were confronted by this great sage, they didn't even recognize his spiritual power because of their pride. Their pride came from the fact that they were sons of Kuber and were very wealthy. They had good bodily features and many good qualities. So they were only when they were cursed did they wake up to the fact <laughs> that, you know, they were wrong. So you see that today, you know, people who have some power, some position, they put themselves in the position of wanting to control others. Mm -hmm. yes, we, but we have an example of a, we have an example of uh, someone who, who was a very powerful person who heard from someone who was quite lesser than them and took the advice and that was um, uh, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great uh, was one thief that was uh, apprehended and brought for Alexander the Great for him to punish him. And uh, he was about to punish him. And then the thief said, well, actually, you know, uh, you're going to punish me for my thievery, but actually, I'm a, we, we are both the same. You are going to country to country and stealing other people's countries. You're a big thief. I'm a stall thief. We're both thieves. Mm -hmm. So you want to punish me. When Alexander heard that, he realized the thief was right, and he let him go. <laughs> he was a wise man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Papa tells that story, that he took advice from a person who he was about to punish, who was actually a criminal, who showed that actually there's no difference between you and me. <laughs> So then would you say that we should always be humble and open to hearing because we may be hearing the spiritual master through even a child or a non-devotee or, or someone else because uh, the spiritual master is always trying to pull us up to a better position. And so uh, the divine presence of the spiritual master can be seen coming through anyone. Is that? Yeah, you have to examine. We have the example of Govu Mangala Thakur, who heard from a prostitute. But that prostitute was simply the, the, the medium by which his former guru spoke through. So he heard the voice of his former guru coming through this prostitute, and he understood, yes, this is correct. So yeah, that's what they say. We, you, can take, you can take gold from a filthy place, as long as you know it's gold. <laughs> You can, there's a whole list. This is Chanaka Pandit, taking gold from a filthy place, accepting a wife from an ex, from a family that has an ex, obscure background. There's a whole list of, accepting, accepting a qualified wife from an, ex, coming from an obscure background. So, so in other words, the tendency is to write something off because of a particular, in other words, <laughs> I, I give you another example, which goes on in our society. A temple president, he's trying to manage the temple. So he does so many things that are correct and so many things, but then sometimes he does something wrong and people remember that. <laughs> They remember the mistake he made and they kind of over, overshadow or don't recognize all the other things that were nice and helpful. Let's see that. So sometimes even a good person will do a wrong thing and a, a, a bad person will do a right thing. So 
So for the person who's hearing it or receiving it, the, the, that message could be beneficial. Mm -hmm. So on the flip side, if we are open to hearing everything from everyone, won't, won't our brain get muddled and confused and bewildered because we want to actually hear uh, the spiritual authority. We don't want to get swayed yeah. by other people. That's the, for devotees, that's the best thing because you can get everything you need in one place. It's like a shopping mall. You can go to a shopping mall and do all your shopping, or you can go to the, all the individual stores all over town and do your shopping. But if you get it all in one place, then it saves you a lot of time and trouble and energy. So we get everything from Krishna or his pure devotee. We don't need to go anywhere else. Thank you, Guru Mara. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Very Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So we can conclude here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Mara. I think uh, it, um, there are no, no more questions now. Um, it's yeah. Been, past one hour um, so i guess we can stop here yeah yeah i also have to um, i have to give class at the temple in 45 minutes so, okay. so i should go so thank you very much and uh, we'll continue with ram Leela tomorrow <laughs> yes Guru Maharaj. thank you so much Guru Maharaj. um thank you all the devotees thank you so much Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. thank you Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All glory is to Shiva Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, all the devotees.